Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have a Control Atuma build. And Atuma has been one of those cards that people have started playing around with a little bit more. There's been a Tempo Atuma list that's been floating around that also uses some kind of lane control mechanics through like a Titania, not, not lane control, but Titania, it uses Storm, uh, and a few other counter cards to push power early, and then you can choose to lock down or decide what and how you play your cards. But for me, I've had more success with this control the board, control the opponent and what they can do type of deck. Especially when it comes to Shuri. If you can get a good Shuri read, then sometimes you have Cosmo in one lane. You can Professor X lock the other, and then their Taskmaster is just not going to be able to be Tasky on the last turn. Now, the end of this video did get kind of uh, interrupted. You will have to stick around to find out, but it got interrupted. We weren't able to complete the last game. Up until that point, we were doing fairly well with the deck. It really seemed to shine against those decks that really pushed their power late in the game. So things like Shuri, you can control enough of the board early enough that you can lock them down and lock down what they can do. Uh, Atuma is one of those that's decent in the list compared whenever you use it with zero. You could also use it behind the behind an armor lane or you could use it in an empty lane into a Professor X on five. A lot of play around potential, a lot of ways to kind of navigate this deck. And it does decently into the current meta. I wouldn't say that this breaks it open, but if you're looking for and you enjoy a more control heavy build, this one might be one that's worth testing out. Now, with any kind of control build, it is usually advantageous to snap early because if you force them into an unwinnable position on turn five, a lot of times they're going to retreat after your Professor X comes down or if you snap whenever Daredevil is on the board. And so knowing that once you get a feel for the deck, this is one of those in control heavy builds in general, you do have to snap a little bit earlier. My advice would be once you identify what the opponent is running and you have a good draw at that point snap, otherwise you may play it a little bit more cautiously. But with the brief deck explanation out of the way, if you want to see more of this deck and other decks live, make sure to check us out on twitch.tv slash TLG snap. We might even be live right now, but we are going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, first up we have Symbio Bro, and Sokovia discarded their death. It discarded our Sunspot, so we lose out on a little bit of early early power, early soak, but we they do lose a pretty big resource. And seeing death, we have to think of potentially either Death Wave, could be Galactus, could be a version that runs like a Doctor Doom and a Wave and just a couple of like good cards. But those are all potential cards that could be here the wave coming up here is uh, kind of scary i think by playing armor into the right lane we actually are gonna be able to grab initiative on this turn wow we do so there's a couple of ways we can play this one if we think that they're gonna go with the galactus if they played it into shuri's lab i mean we get some really good benefit they can't shang chi us over there if they play it into Sokovia, um, doing something like a Professor X this turn could just win us the game. <clears throat> but a more fun play line, and I think what we're going to go with, it's a little bit safer. It doesn't require a read on where Galactus is going to be played or what it looks like. We're going to play Arrow into mid. That way, if they Galactus to either side, we're going to yank it over. So they did play a card over in Shuri's lap. Ooh, a Doc Ock is uh, is interesting. We now lock down <laughs> Asgard with our Professor X that they pulled in. And then our Atuma comes in to uh, allow us to draw the extra resources from Asgard. <laughs> and uh, then we get the quick and uh, easy retreat. So um, all of, of all of those times that Doc Ock backfires feels like the majority of the time he does not function the way that you want him to let's go ahead and take the quick and easy one cube let's jump over in the next one all right next up we have moose and the first location being sinister london and us having sunspot off the jump is big we do have to worry about a potential killmonger but i think uh, early on having those two and then we can just kind of soak our way to victory if we get a couple of armors, maybe a Cosmo, maybe an early Professor X lock, can allow us to really hold down our advantage. Ooh, we do get Professor X. So we're going to go for as much power in Sinister London by turn five as we can, so that hopefully we can take the tempo hint and we can just uh, throw Professor X in the lane. We have Destroyer to, as our like backup turn six play if we need it. 
but this probably means a, an early snap. I almost want to snap into it, but right now we're still potentially worried about a Shuri play. If they do Shuri into Red Skull, they can play that on five, and it just... We will be able to lock down one of the lanes with Professor X, but that leaves the other one being just massive. <laughs> uh, we could do armor here. I'm, I guess we're going to armor and soak just in case they do like an, a turn three Killmonger and they just want to get the sunspots out of the way. We're going to do armor and soak. Next turn, we probably soak all of our energy. Ooh, the Cosmo's big. Um, so maybe they are running Shuri. And if so, then we can really restrict them from doing what they want to do. So let's go ahead and snap on them. All they've played is Cosmo, but we're okay with that. Uh, if they do a Shuri here and they want to do a Red Skull in this lane, I think that's fine. We're going to be able to lock down the second lane before there's copies because Shuri is not going to be enough tempo for them to really get and enable what they want, I don't think. So let's go with the... Uh, Let's go with the Professor X. They probably play here. If they skip and soak for the She-Hulk and Taskmaster, She-Hulk and Arrow, it's not going to work for them. But we will get uh, at least one of the lanes. We may lock in the loss in the left lane, uh, potentially. So if it's a Red Skull, it's 26 power. Can we soak and beat that? I don't know. It becomes very, very close. And so they do play in Sinister London. We're going to lock down two of the lanes early. The Captain Marvel is not big enough. She is in mid, but she can't roam to the left. She can't roam to the right. All we have to do is uh, skip our way to victory. The Sunspot will soak in the left and right. And so the Shuri play is not quite enough. We put them in a very difficult... <laughs> we put them in a very difficult position. One of the reasons why I like the finality of, uh, of a Professor X. Let's go ahead and take the two cubes and we'll jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have the... Uh, next up we have Slothworks. The first location being Lechugia, we can play around that a little bit if we'd like. Um, so we can either put cards there early, we could, if they're not going to invest there, maybe we just Professor X lock it on five. And uh, maybe we can sneak away with that. We do have armor that's going to go into a Teal and we are going to shuffle our cards. So we want to play our Cosmo, we want to tempo it out. Wow. Uh, Superflow is actually very nice for us. Uh, I'm torn. I'm so torn. But we're going to do Cosmo and Zero into the Atelian location. Um, I want to keep the extra energy so that if we draw back into Professor X, we can just play it. Um, at the same time, we don't want to play into the Lechugia and make our redraw less consistent. So uh, not, I, not an ideal placement. You usually don't want all of your tech cards, uh, so your armor and your Cosmo in stacked in one lane. I, yeah, we're going to, it's, it is what it is. Um, so we're just going to deal with it. So they play a Cosmo in the Super Flow. We play a Cosmo in mid. Now the only place that they could play a potential Shuri would be in the Lechugia. So if they go with Shuri, kind of, do we, we snap back here, right? Just seeing the Lizard and Cosmo. Probably, so it's either, it limits it to either good card list, Sarah Surfer, or most likely a Shuri deck. If they drew back into Shuri, they, they either play it into the Lechugia this turn. Or if they didn't, they probably play their cards here. We're going to snap back. It's, it's a read. Um, at the end of the day, it's a gut read for the Professor X, which with any kind of control list, it is very heavily leaned on being able to make a good read. Otherwise, if you don't and you just try to snap after Professor X comes down and locks down a lane, you're going to be missing out on a lot of potential cubes. So we do get the two cube uh, retreat. And so it doesn't necessarily matter what they ended up having. But we had uh, our destroyer to lean in on on either of these lanes because of the cosmos. We had a Tuma that we could have maybe thrown into a Teelin. Maybe it's our only card in Superflow. Just a lot of really good play lines that we had available. So we're going to go ahead and take the two cubes. Let's jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Before. And before I forget to mention, if you like live foreign content, to check us out on twitch.tv slash TLC Snap. And if you're more of a YouTube person, which I completely understand, if you're more of a YouTube person, make sure that you're subscribed if you're enjoying the video. So the first location is Vormir. That's going to destroy a card, whatever card we play there. And uh, we do have armor if we want to try to protect it. From the hub, we got Lockjaw. We don't necessarily want to rotate any of our cards. Wow, so they have an Infinite. They stole one of our cards, but they got that from the hub as well. They have an Infinite in hand, which is kind of scary, because there's a lot of ways that they could be trying to enable that. They could be going with some kind of like double down deck, 
where they're wanting to maybe skip and float on five or six. Um, I think either way, we're going to angle towards trying to grab initiative. We want to be able to get a Professor X lock on five. We will get the Professor X read on turn five um, from the Daredevil. So we can see if whatever lane we think we're going to play into is a lane that we should actually play into. We have zero, but I think we're going to go Lizard. Uh, I think we're going to go Scorpion and Lizard. If this ends up being a Professor X lock lane, we're okay. We're, we're okay. Um, and it's going to hurt their cards by... It's going to negatively impact their cards by one. So we're going to spread out our power, giving us the best possible chance to get a lane locked down with Professor X on five. And I want to snap before that comes down. I want to snap before that's a possibility. Um, before Professor X and the Daredevil read because they're much more likely to stay on four into five rather than five, they make a card play and then you snap. They're much more likely to retreat in that scenario. So they play Captain Marvel. So that brings them up to 11. Ooh. And the Atuma, I thought they got from us because it's the same variant. That is that is their Atuma. Because <laughs> um, I just looked in my hand and we don't have Atuma. Otherwise, we could have went with like a zero and an Atuma. Um, wow. Wowie. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, we're, we're hoping for here. On the next turn, our best bet, our best fighting shot is to top deck the Red Skull, I think. Um, we're going to lock down the mid lane. That way, uh, Captain Marvel can only roam to Vormir uh, or the Daily Bugle. And so it, it allows us to more easily uh, like pinpoint where we're trying to fight. Wow, and we do top deck the Red Skull. Oof. All right. So how do we want to do this? We can do zero and red skull to the left. I, I guess it probably doesn't matter. We could do zero and red skull to the left or to the right. If I'm before, uh, then I'm investing into the daily bugle this turn. That's where I'm going to be playing my big resources. So if Captain Marvel has to move, I can still win this lane. But we are only losing this one by three. So the chance that we can get this to a closer deficit than this lane i don't know i think it comes into just a, a gut read with that roving five power from captain marvel not six i think is important to know with the roving five power i think we're going to stay into the daily bugle hope that they're not able to cap it out like we're able to cap it out so the sunspot to the left is not huge the jubilee um zero power jubilee it pulls into a hella wow um so it resummons their black cat and uh, we should be able to get the win from this card wow wow that could have went a lot of other ways <laughs> that could have went uh many other directions but we are able to hold it down i'm still so surprised that somebody else is running the the pixel atuma that's still blowing my mind <laughs> but oh wait oh my gosh they're not running pixel atuma they pulled it with our we they pulled it with cable it took me a solid five minutes to figure out that uh, Cable pulled it. All of you people that commented that that was our Tuma and they pulled it with Cable, uh, you guys are right. Thank you for letting me know. I got there. I got there eventually, just a little bit more slowly. We will take our four cubes. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, it's time for my, it's time for our daily dose of Je of Jeff. Oh, I feel like we we match up at least one time a day. Um, at least for the, at least for the like recent uh, at least in recent days so uh he starts with kitty pride which is it's it's decent um depending on how many times he can bounce it throughout out the game he could also be running maybe his maybe his bounce deck maybe it's more of a control heavy maybe it just runs like it's sarah tech that runs an angela uh, bishop kitty pride Ooh, so the hood makes me think that uh it's probably a bounce deck and shuri's lab is beautiful for Jeff. Um, like that is the ideal <laughs> location for him. Uh, because now every time he bounces Kitty Pride, she's gonna get massive over the course of the game. And so we have to find a way to stop that from happening. I don't know. Um, I don't know if we can even angle for a Professor X lock. We do have Daredevil, so we'll be able to see what he plays on five, so we can find a good lane to uh, Professor X lock. But the Kitty Pride is going to be uh, very, very big, very detrimental, and uh, I'm not looking for. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it. If we had one way to get an extra card here, we could cap out their Eternity range, 
I don't know that we do, though. Let's go ahead and soak with the Sunspot. I think we're probably safe in the negative zone. It's a, what, a beast? Uh, Carnage. Ooh, interesting. Um, so if, instead of beast, he's uh, using Carnage to uh, soak up some of that some of that power there. <sighs> Kitty Pride is just too big. Uh, it's too big. We're not going to be... <laughs> We're not going to be able to stop it. Oh, no. Well, we, we had a good run, guys. Whenever you get Shuri's Lab with Kitty Pride, unless there's a specific way to stop it, whether that be a Killmonger or a, I don't know, a lane change, there's you just, it's just unfortunate. <laughs> it's, uh, Kitty Pride just starts accelerating so quickly um, that it's hard to even, it's hard to even do anything. Oh no. We don't even get to see the loss. Ah, oof. Kitty Pride absolutely obliterated us. RIP. Been fun. Been real. <laughs> it hasn't been real fun. All right, guys. I'll see how long this takes to resolve. All right. And so, with that uh, anticlimactic uh, disconnect, we are going to go ahead and end the video. It seems to be in, stuck in some kind of endless loop. And. From what I've gathered, it can only be resolved once the game kind of times out, which from a couple of the things that I've seen, the endless loops typically will time out the game session and kind of delete what was there It about 45 minutes after creation. And so I think we have to wait about 40 minutes before we can get back into another game. And so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and end the video there, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, whatever whatever this ending was but the rest of the video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below and if i gather any other information on the on the glitch which i think is linked to daredevil and kitty pride i will make a separate short video on it but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video as always this has been tlsg later guys